Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you guys doing? It is another fantastic Tuesday morning for Tuesday training. Uh, it is right at 9 a.m. Central Time. And as always, we are doing it live right here at Syndicate Headquarters in Austin. Man, is it a beautiful day today. It is a little crisp outside. We got some cooler weather blown in. Uh, but man, the sun is shining, blue skies, and it is looking gorgeous. Hope the weather is good where you at. Chime in, drop your comments, let us know what's going on with you for Tuesday training, where you're viewing from, etc. And if you get a chance, click the button that Lily's going to drop here in the comments here in a second that allows StreamYard to view your Facebook comments. Or maybe it's Facebook viewing your StreamYard comments. I don't know. It's one of the two. Uh, but it helps you be non-anonymous like Ms. Luce here. Thanks for tuning in, Luce. Always good to see you. Snowing in Massachusetts, he said. Wow. I got my friend, I uh, saw my buddy uh, Andrew Saxa up in Pennsylvania is having some serious snow going on up there too. So uh, I feel for you guys, man. I love it down here in Texas. We really don't get much snow and it's usually hot, but it's nice and crisp today. So we got a great show lined up for you guys. We're going to have Sandra Gebhardt on the show today. She is a bit too much. You probably heard of her. She is the queen of social media and she is going to teach us about uh, using artificial intelligence tools to help amplify our social media. And that is definitely what we're going to get into today. Uh, thank you, Grace, for tuning in. Always good to have you as well. And uh, as always, this show is brought to you by MetaZeus. Real quick, if you are not familiar with MetaZeus, but you're an agent out there doing business in the Medicare Advantage or prescription drug space, this is a tool that you need. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It is definitely getting around the campfire quite a bit, and it's a tool that we use in our business pretty close to daily. About every couple of days, I am logged into MetaZoos checking out our book because it is open enrollment season, which means it is ripe for people working to uh, steal your clients from you, basically. Let's just say it as it is, right? So what MetaZoos allows you to do, number one, is monitor your book of business so that you'll know when you lose business within 24 to 48 hours versus waiting to maybe a month or two months or so uh, to find out from the carrier when you finally get a commission statement that has a charge back on it. So uh, definitely, definitely helpful. It will also tell you what the LIS status is for those clients. And all you need is two bits of information. You need their Medicare number and their date of birth. If you have that, you can verify their address. You can verify what plan they are currently on and if they have any future enrollment changes coming. And then also, again, verify their LIS level. So great, great tool. I highly recommend it. Check it out. Uh, we will make sure that is in the comments as well, a link for that so you can check it out and just uh, connect with our buddy in the group, Evan McGuffey, and he can get you a demo if you want to check it out and see if it's something that you would like to use, but I highly recommend it. Uh, moving on, as always, we do have a wee bit of news before we dive in to the good stuff. And first up to bat is this article from Reuters. Fairly, fairly simple. And it says that pharmaceutical groups lawsuit over Medicare's drug pricing program is dismissed. It got thrown out by a judge right here in Austin, Texas, as a matter of fact. Uh, if you look down there, it says a federal judge on Monday dismissed a lawsuit by a major pharmaceutical industry trade association challenging a new program that allows Medicare to negotiate prices with drug companies for selected costly drugs. You may remember, uh, I have talked about this in past episodes, uh, but Medicare basically has uh, a recent law that allows them to negotiate the top 100 drugs. Uh, drugs like Eliquis, for example, is on that list. There are numerous others. I've posted that list in past episodes, uh, but it's allowing them to negotiate prices to bring down the cost to Medicare so that they can pass that savings back to the consumer. The Inflation Reduction Act participates in this as well. And as I've mentioned, while the cost of drugs might be coming down, the cost of premiums on some of these Part D plans is going up. And we will likely even see that pass through in the Medicare Advantage world. But going on, it says right here, U.S. District Judge David Ezra in Austin, Texas, sided with President Joe Biden's administration in dismissing a lawsuit by the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, PHRMA and two other groups that argued that the program was unconstitutional. It goes on to say that that program, right, to negotiate the top 100 drugs, the program aims to save $25 billion with a B annually in 2031 by requiring drug makers 
to negotiate the prices of selected expensive drugs with the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So if the drug makers that refuse to participate must either pay heavy fines or withdraw altogether from Medicare, which covers 66 million people. I find that interesting right there. Drug makers that refuse to participate in negotiating these prices will either pay heavy fines or withdraw altogether from Medicare. Now, Medicare requires that if you are a Part D plan, uh, as I remember, you must have at least one of every of a drug in every single category that's available. So it's, it's kind of curious if some of these drugs start pulling out and withdrawing, um, which I assume is a possibility, right? Then I wonder how that might affect um, the availability of drugs that for plans that have to have one of every category. I assume there's enough drugs out there they can find an alternative, but you know it, it does kind of bother me some that they're pushing on these plans or these drug manufacturers, I should say, so hard uh, that they may push some of them to just withdraw from Medicare altogether, and that won't be a good thing. Uh, but certainly saving Americans on drug costs is a good thing, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, we can stick the finger to the big pharma. So pretty interesting stuff there, but they did throw that lawsuit out, so Medicare is moving forward with price negotiations on all of these drugs. Now, some good news right here. Uh, this is an article from HIT Consultant. Never seen that one before, but I found this uh, doing my searches. I have basically some Google alerts that point me in the direction of different news blurbs that I'm looking for. But this one says that Medicare expands coverage for ever since E3 CGM system. What the hell is that? That is a glucose monitoring system. Pretty simple. So it's for diabetes management. And if you go on and read this, it says Medicare has significantly expanded access to the ever since E3 continuing glucose monitoring system, a long lasting and implantable, implantable option that offers several advantages over traditional CGMs. So if you cruise down here a little further, it will tell you that previously only people with diabetes who required multiple daily insulin injections were eligible for Medicare coverage of implantable CGMs. The new policy removes that restriction, making the Eversense E3 accessible to all insulin users, as well as non-insulin users with a history of, hyper, of a problematic hypoglycemia. So this is good stuff, right? They're gonna expand this so that people that have diabetes that aren't necessarily taking multiple injections have an option to get an implantable glucose monitoring system to help them better manage their diabetes. So there's a win for us right there. Got one more little piece. Uh, actually, I got a couple of pieces. Uh, first one up real quick right here. I have talked about fraud quite a bit. Uh, this comes actually from uh, the desk or the website of Marco Rubio, U.S. Senator for Florida. And as you guys know, a lot of times on my show, I like to point out fraud because there is uh, rampant fraud in the Medicare space, right? They've got these COVID test kits. They've got uh, diabetes screening, cancer screening stuff, all these various scams that they're using to peel money out of the Medicare system where they can bill them for basically uh, items that were never actually ordered or needed by the beneficiary. So he is introducing a new bill, the Punishing Medicare Fraudsters Act. The current penalties are relatively low for criminals who commit healthcare fraud, despite significant impact this crime has on older, sick, and disabled Americans. The legislation would increase the financial penalties and lengthen prison sentences for committing healthcare fraud. And then there's also the Medicare Organization Report Enhancing Summaries Act. This legislation would develop a system to detest how to provide more consistent Medicare summary notices to patients thus increasing the likelihood of fraud detection. The bill aims to help Medicare users quickly identify fraud and create a transparent process for them to receive and understand their Medicare summary notices. So pretty good stuff. I appreciate Rubio uh, doing some work out there to fight Medicare fraud. He seems to be one of the only senators that's actually trying to get behind some of this um, because truth is fraud costs Medicare millions upon millions, probably pushing close to billions of dollars because y'all have seen some articles that I've posted in the past where the DOJ is arresting people and sending them to prison for ripping off Medicare for 
$72 million, $33 million, $15 million. Like it's definitely cost them money. And if we're, if they're stealing money from Medicare, that makes it even harder for it to be profitable and cover what it needs to cover, right? Uh, that hospital trust fund, as we've always heard, is depleting at a fairly rapid pace. And this is definitely one of the causes for that. So kudos to Mr. Rubio. I appreciate you for that. Uh, I am curious to what this act might do in regards to other costs. Obviously, they don't mention that in here. But if indeed it does help cut down on fraud, then outstanding. Last one real quick, and we will jump into the main show. But as always, I have talked about Kaiser Family Foundation many, 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 many times. If you are a health insurance agent, whether it's Medicare or ACA, and you're not following Kaiser Family Foundation, you're simply missing the boat. Uh, excellent, excellent source uh, to health policy research, polling, news, trends, changes, and reports like this one. So 10 things you need to know about Medicare Advantage dual eligible special needs plans, the D SNPs, if you will. Great, great thing. I'm not going to go through this whole article, but I want to point out what is going on in this report. Uh, they're basically going to give you 10 really strong facts about what's going on in the D SNP market uh, and mainly statistics. For example, number one, about three in 10 or 29 percent of your dual eligible individuals are enrolled in D SNPs, right? So that leaves about 71% that are just on Medicare, Medicaid, uh, but about 30% of them are enrolled in a DSNP. It goes on to kind of give you the variances by state. And this is the next frame is the one that I like. So this is the share of dual eligible individuals enrolled in DSNPs across counties in 2021 with those counties being color coded. Obviously the pale blue on the left is a county that has less than 10% of Medicare beneficiaries that are enrolled in DSNPs, or I'm sorry, dual eligible beneficiaries enrolled in DSNPs. Uh, and then your red counties are where you have the highest percentage. Now, I would assume, because I haven't looked at all these counties, I would assume that the areas where you're seeing orange, green, and red probably have a proliferation of available DSNP plans, hence the higher enrollment penetration. So if I'm an agent, which I am, and I'm marketing to the DSNP space, maybe that's a space that I like to go after. This is a kick-ass slide for you because you can immediately look at counties. Now, you're going to have to do some research to figure out specifically which these counties are. But this is going to basically tell you where some of your highest penetration for DSNP is available, which should tell you where some of the best DSNP plans are at. So if you are a guy out there that likes to market DSNP, uh, that's a great frame for you. And then you can cruise on to read some of these other items. Like I said, I'm just going to kind of make you of, aware of this uh, report that they've got. Look at that. United Healthcare and Humana leading the pack with 52% penetration on DSNP enrollees. And obviously, we saw the footprint blow up in the last couple of years. And a big part of that was the Medicaid expansion. Uh, but the redetermination of Medicare has so far not made a dent. Uh, in the available plans. So, and I think we'll see another another bump in footprint growth uh, in 2025 for Medicare Advantage, or not for Medicare Advantage, but for DSNP specifically. So a lot of great stuff. I'll get all these articles posted in the group for you guys, uh, but definitely check that out. Make sure you do follow Kaiser Family Foundation. It is an outstanding place to get excellent, excellent news, information, and data about the health insurance industry in general. Like I said, whether you're a Medicare, Medicaid, doing ACA plans or whatever, you need to follow Kaiser family. But without further ado, let's get into the meat of the show. We've got a good friend of mine, man. I've had a chance to hang out with this girl many, many, many times. Uh, I see her at events. She's definitely one of the road warriors out there that gets around the circuit. And I was sitting at the DTDW event, do the damn work out in Scottsdale in late January. Uh, which was the last time I had a chance to hang out with Sandra. And I did a lot. I spent a lot of time observing her, right? When she wasn't watching, I was hiding in the bushes and kind of peering through the window watching her. And there's one thing that I want to say about Miss Sandra Gebhardt um, that I'm not sure too many people are aware of, or maybe she's not even aware of, but I would bet she is. And I'm sure her husband is definitely aware. Girl works her ass off. Flat out, the girl works her ass off. I sat and watched her run her booth, run her thing, network with people, work that event to really push her brand. 
And I would say she was probably the hardest working vendor at the DTDW event that was out there talking to people, engaging with people, pushing her services, right? Signing people up, getting them in her program. She travels around, she hustles, she brings her own swag, she carries stuff around, she promotes like heck. Um, I'm definitely super proud to be her friend. And she has a work ethic and an attitude that a lot of you agents can definitely learn from and rub off on. So let's get her up here on stage. What is happening, Miss Gebhardt? How are you? Hey, I'm super excited to be here and um, honored or creeped out that you were watching me like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I do that from time to time. So it's good to have the director of awesomeness with us today. <laughs> How are things in Montana? Me. Somebody asked me, they said, what's your official title? And this is what I came in on. <laughs> I like it. I like it. The DOA, the Director um, of Awesomeness. Just don't get it confused with dead on arrival. <laughs> Although if I don't get over these colds, that's might be the next step. <laughs> Man, it is that um, time of year. Yeah. So um, coming live from Roundup, Montana, I just noticed it's snowing outside. Um <sighs> So, you know, I always got to keep up with Andrew. <laughs> he's, he's always a step ahead of us. So Yes, he is. Uh, Andrew is definitely the road warrior, but you're right there with him. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just enjoying a, a snowy morning here. Uh, most of you guys know I don't take calls before 10 a.m. unless it's for Tony Merwin. And then I'm up and ready to go. There we go. What time? What is it? Like 7.15 there? It's 8. Mm. So... Um, that's one of the, that's one of the trends I'm trying to buck this year. Um, for me myself, I think it's really important for you to understand when you're creative and I get, you know, sales agents have a specific time that they can call, but then me and maybe John Wetmore might call a little bit of bullshit on that because you don't have to be done calling at four o'clock in the evening or even five o'clock in the evening <laughs> or even six o'clock in the evening or even seven o'clock in the evening. Um, so for me, I have always worked better, um, at night. <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. um, I tell my clients that are all in and my vibe CMO offer, I'm like, you guys, I work until about midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And then I sleep till eight or nine in the morning. And then I start my day back over at 10. That is when I am my best from that kind of 9 PM to one or 2 AM time slot, um, not getting so many messages All my East coast people are asleep. They're not texting. Um, so that has, that has always been my schedule, but what's funny. Um, I just made a post about this, about us expecting perfection. And when we expect perfection from others, what we're actually wanting people to do is interact the way we interact. Right. Mm -hmm. So somebody like you that wakes up super early might be like, well, Sandra is just lazy. She's not even down here yet. I've been up since five. Cool dog. <laughs> I worked until two in the morning. You went to bed at yes. 4 30. <laughs> yes. Are... So, so when we're looking at all the motivation out there, we're looking at all of the, the ways that we want to set up our days and we want to go about our life. We can't always do what works for Tony Merwin or somebody else that's that's posting online. Because if I all of a sudden said, okay, well, I want to be part of the 5 a.m. club and I want to do a bunch of sit-ups and I want to do a cold plunge and all of that stuff, that means I get three hours of sleep every night? Am I, am I setting myself up for success or am I trying to do what somebody else is doing without fixing all the rest of my schedule <laughs> to make something happen? So that's a, that's a drum you guys are going to hear me beating a lot this year is finding out what works for you. What makes, what makes you tick the best? Um, and that's part of, of my new program, the A Bit Too Much Marketing, where you get a daily text message from me with, with fun tips like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Abs there's a lot to be said about authenticity, not only in how you express yourself, right? But also how you conduct yourself, right? Your, your, your actions. Is there authenticity in your actions? Are you being true to yourself and who you are? Uh, and certainly, you know, and I'm not trying to reinforce that in a broader like, oh, you know, sell yourself short and don't get up till 10 because that's just who you are. You got to find out who you are. And sometimes it takes some testing and probing. But if you talk to Rebecca Davis, who is both a friend of ours, um, she's very similar in that. Like she's not the early bird. She's the night owl. Right. Mm -hmm. She's still working 10, 12, 14 hours a day. She just works a different set of hours. Yes. Who cares? And that's OK. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I never understood why people want to make a judgment because someone doesn't get up at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. and and go through their day. They're just because they're working a different set of 14 hours doesn't make them less motivated, less successful, less intelligent or any of that. It's just you got to be true to yourself, man. Yep. And finding those, finding that time that works for you. Now, some people are super tired at night, so that's not their, that's not their time. Um, for me, when the world is quiet, um, man, I can just think, you know, that's, I do, I do a lot of my thinking when, when I'm driving and when, when noise can't come in at me. Absolutely. It helps me. Absolutely. So let's, let's dive into this. I know you are the, the queen of social media, you are a bit too much. Uh, exactly. I always like to give you a hard time about that, but I think that is absolutely the best, most authentic uh, expression of yourself and your brand that I've probably ever seen. And it takes, I'll give you some credit because in my opinion, it takes a lot of balls, pardon the language, to put yourself out there with a brand like that to say, hey, I'm obnoxious kind of, but that's just me, right? And that, that's my brand. So it is. It, it's it's phenomenal. So I, I want to find out, like, what, what are some of the things that you've personally done within social media? Like, what are some of the things that you found that work? Right. And then now how as the crux of the conversation is listed, like, how are you now incorporating AI to help you out with that stuff? So a lot of you guys, if you haven't heard me talk about the five by five by five by now, um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know I don't know what to do. Um, yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to go back through it again because there's a couple trainings in here. I know Joe's trained on it. I've trained on it with you guys. So you can always go back and search the groups. You can. Did you guys know you can always go back and search the groups? <laughs> you can hit Absolutely. the little magnifying glass. Um, or the Syndicate YouTube channel, which is chalked absolutely full of incredible training, stuff that you would have to pay 10, 20, $30,000 a year to have access to. And I was looking at your last video. It has 12 views. Like you guys are, you guys are sitting on. So um, <laughs> there's a couple. Not sure things. if that was a dig on me or the audience. The audience. <laughs> <laughs> because let me tell you, one of the things that, and Tony and I were talking about this um, when we were in, in January. Um, one of the things now, PNC agents, I'm, I'm not so much talking to you right this second, but you got, you got a little speech coming from, from Sandra too, <laughs> but Medicare agents kind of come out. Like I picture it like this, like they wake up like mid December and they're like, what is that ball in the sky? And why does it hurt my eyes? <laughs> um, and I've been taking calls with agents after agents, after agents. And they're like, okay, well in March, in, in April, in March, in April. And I'm like, in March and April, what? what? What are you doing now? What are you doing now for your marketing? Are you doing the five by five by five? Are you posting on your socials? What's your plan? Well, March or April, we'll get back and we'll talk to it, talk about it. And um, what I'm seeing is a lot of agents saying, well, I don't really know where to start, but I don't want to make a decision right now either. Um, and then we have a YouTube channel like yours that is has actual trainings in it. It's not mm -hmm. it's not podcast interviews. It's not somebody's theory. It's actual trainings, and it has twelve views. So I would say, if you are an agent that is like, oh, I'm not quite sure what I want to do, or I don't have a budget, you don't need a budget to learn from Tony and Luke and John Wetmore and the, and the Friday boys, which I mean, they're incredible too. You know, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't name them all. Um, and all the guests you guys have come on and all of this stuff is just sitting there. You don't need a budget to listen to YouTube. I would argue if you're listening to the radio, turn it off and turn your YouTube on because you don't even have to watch it all the way. Right. So, um, I wanted to come in with, and I told Tony, I'm going to do this. This isn't something I normally do. I'm not like your reality check person, but I am, I am right now because, um, I have been taking a lot of sales calls, which is kind of a new thing for me. I usually just talk to people at conferences and follow up. Um, but that is the trend I'm seeing is, uh, death or what is it? Analysis paralysis mm -hmm. <laughs> or death by inaction is what I call it. Cause I don't know how to say the other one right all the time. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of agents that are going to be dead in the water in three months. And you guys, I, I love you all, but mark my words, the marketing you do today 
is you will see results in three to six months. And I don't care if it's running ads or buying leads or any of that kind of stuff, because all of that stuff takes action to put into place. Um, if you're going to start making 500 dials a day, you're going to get a little bit more traction, right? But then all of those people that said no, that's not a no forever. So you need to market to them. You need to figure out how to stay in front of people. So um, I guess just harsh rah, reality check <laughs> this morning is, um, you know, go and find your resources and then put them into action. <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys some stuff. So go back, watch the five by five by five. I have a free um, app you can download, Sandra Gebhardt Marketing. It's in both iPhones and the other ones, whatever they're called. Um, but I pay an extra $2 a month for you non-iPhone people to have access to it too. <laughs> um, it's free. The five by five by five training's on there. I'm sure it's on your guys' YouTube channel. Real, real quick, just to make sure, and I'm, we're not going to get into it. We're not going to train on it, but just to make yeah. sure I understand it. Five by five by five is five posts. Five comments, five DMs, five friend requests, five friend requests, five comments, um, and five direct messages. Um, it's not too much to do. I promise no. <laughs> it's really not too much to do. Um, and you are going to see an increase in your omnipresence. You're going to see an increase in people stopping you at the grocery store right now. If people aren't stopping you at your grocery store or stopping you on the, in the shopping malls or wherever you're at, um, in your local community, you're not marketing enough in your local community. You're not out there enough. Um, so I'll never forget, Tony, I'm sure you're still the same way. Um, <clears throat> like when we started the, these big insurance conferences and people stop you in the airport, and they want to take a selfie with you. I'm like, yeah. you want to take a selfie with me? <laughs> like, um, but that is, that's the omnipresence that, that we've created. Um, and having that common theme through it, like your juices for the next 75 days or your butt, you gotta be halfway through, huh? A little more. We're right on 43 today. There you go. All right. It's all downhill. We got 32 from more to go. <laughs> so, and then we're in Cabo San Lucas as a reward. So, oh, there you go. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I just had to go trick or treating with Gage after I finished mine. <laughs> now we're going to do a weekend in Cabo because I believe that it's important to reward yourself when you hit big goals. Yes. Right. Yep. Uh, okay. I think that's important. So we, we did, Grace and I decided like, Hey, look, we're busting our ass. We're committing to this thing. We're eating right. We're working out daily. We're now working out pretty close to twice a day, pretty heavily. Like I'm doing an hour in the morning, then another hour to two hours at night in Kung Fu training. So I was like, you know what? We're working so hard at this. And technically we're also saving some money because we're not eating out as much. We're not drinking yeah. or other things that we're not doing. So there's a little byproduct of that. That's like, Hey, we have some extra cash too. So I'm like, well, let's take some of that and just take a little weekend trip to Cabo to celebrate with our new skinny that. bodies. So there we go. <laughs> so we'll it. make sure it's on social media via the five by five by five. So you guys are all aware. I love that. So um, I'm going to show you guys some stuff on here. Uh, I've one of the big hurdles we've had with with social media in, in the last couple of years when I've been really coaching on this and talking to you guys about it is, OK, but I still don't know what to post. I'm not quite sure I have my brand voice down. Um, and that is that for that, you guys really do need to get a mentor, whether it's me, whether it's somebody else, but you really should know what your vision, um, mission statements are. You should have an idea of exactly who your ideal client avatar is and your brand voice. But I understand it's hard to, to get that out there and to, and to feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to show you guys some of the AI tools that I'm using, um, that will get you to where you want to be. Um, can you see my screen? Um, is that, I don't think that's what we're looking for. Ooh, there it goes. Can you see when this? You, uh, that I can see. Okay. Excelente. Perfect. So um, one thing is I do have, uh, I have a newsletter that goes out every single day that has um, tips and tricks on it. Um, it got, it's got seven social media posts. I'll put the link in for you guys to sign up for it, but this is 100% for free. Um, and I'm just going to show you guys the actual newsletter here. Um, so I've got a training on here and then I've got uh, a posting prompt uh, on this day in history, national day of quote to share a funny joke, life hacks, 
uh, fun fair, fun facts, and then, um, you know, something that I'm offering. So I'll drop the link for you guys to sign up for that. But um, <clears throat> that also helps get your get your mind working. Um, that, we're was all a, that was an AI app that you that creates those newsletters for you. Yes. Yep. That one I actually only have access to right now. Okay. Um, but I want to show you guys something really cool here. Let's say that you want to take this Tuesday training from Tony um, and, and you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel <laughs> first. But let's say you want to take this Tuesday training that Tony did here uh, about the FCC. Um, you go down, you click on the see more, go to the show transcript, and then highlight this show transcript. And let's say that you want to take um, what Tony's done and you want to make that a post. So we're just going to go into chat GPT. If you're using chat GPT, pay for the upgraded subscription. Um, Definitely so that, four is way better yes. than 3.5. Um, so then we're going to say, um, hello, um, Tony Merwin recently did a training. You know, it's going to respond. Who the hell is Tony Merwin? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Recently did a training. Um, this is the show transcript. I should have typed this ahead of time. Nothing worse than watching somebody type, huh? Um, please write a an article about this in 100 words. And then you hit shift return. Um, that keeps it to where it um, doesn't hit, it doesn't hard return. It's a soft return. So what he's, what's going to do is it's going to, um, give us the information here. Now, sometimes you have to go through and you have to actually read it because the first time I did it on my article with the power producers podcast up here, whoa, um, it just came back and it gave me a synopsis about what the power producers podcast was. Okay. Um, so you have to read it and kind of direct it. And the more you use the, the more you use chat GPT, the more it learns what you're, what you're trying to say and what you're trying to do. So I can go through here and I can say, um, I can take this and make this a Facebook post. Yeah. I can say, you know, Hey, I've been following Tony Merwin for a while. He's, um, and I wanted to share some of his thoughts on the FCC new rules. Okay. Now you might say, well, I need to have my own opinion on that. Well, you don't, you don't need to put your own opinion out. Tony's already put his opinion out. Credit Tony for his opinion, maybe give some of your own thoughts on it, but you can go through here and get the information that he has out and then uh, link it back to his. If you click share on YouTube, you can copy this. And Tony, would you have any issues with somebody sharing that out? Hell no. Nah to educate their audience and educate um, themselves, right? Other agents, whatever your focus is. A lot of people are marketing towards other agents. That's awesome too. So um, this is a really powerful tool where you can go through here and you can scrape other stuff. Let's say that you have an event coming up. This uh, Tony Merwin guy has an event coming up called Invictus. In Invictus 2024. That's how I imagine you guys say it every time. Um, and let's say that you want to help post about it or Tony wants to make another post about it. Same thing. You can go in here and you can say, um, uh, please write a Facebook post about this event coming up. Um, it is the only Spanish speaking event in the insurance space that I know of. <laughs> Um, no, it is make the post a uh, very hype, exciting, and let the audience know that they will be richer if they come. And then I'm going to shift, return, return, and I'm going to drop Tony's content in there right now. And then we're going to see what it comes out with. So I'm not saying that, oh, look, it's writing it in Spanish. <laughs> I did not know it did that till right this second. 
This has it looks to be like it's just translating my post into Spanish. Yep. So interesting. Um, so have you have you had it do this yet? I've definitely used it to translate things into Spanish and help me out, but I haven't had it quite just assume that like, oh, well, if it's the only Spanish language conference, then why the hell are we posting in English? Let's just flip it to Spanish. That's pretty dope. So I have no idea what this says. So I'm just telling it because Tony's saying it's pretty much just translating the same thing. I'm going to yeah. tell it, rewrite this post with a section talking about how you can't miss this event. And I assume that's what it's doing. <laughs> that is definitely what it's doing now. <laughs> um, so you can go in here and use content that you're already using because a lot of times it feels like we're saying the same thing over and over and over again, right? Like, right. hey, agents, you should probably be working on your marketing. I'm saying that all the time. <laughs> um, so I'm finding different ways to say it. So chat GPT is very, very good um, with this kind of stuff. Now, one of the really fun things is um, it's doing some more art right now. So I can say, uh, create a picture logo with three Spanish agents um, next to a lion carrying swords. I thought that was a separate add-on that you had to have outside of chat GPT. No, no, it was. Um, but just about a month ago, it, it popped into this. Oh, shit, now, it does that. have a Canva plugin. I have not found the Canva plugin to be much more, much helpful right now. Okay. Um, but this, this is way easier to use than maybe a discord way easier to use than discord. But I can show you guys a kind of a cool, well, that, that, that'll be a different training. For those of you guys that are using Discord, like I saw Mike Moore was on here. Some of you guys that are really into the AI movement, Eric Fierro, you can take this image that it generates for you, and then I'll upload it into Discord. So look at that. That's pretty dope looking. I like it. Um, so all you have to do, now I own this now. This is, this is my graphic. So I can post this anywhere I want. Um, so a little side note for you Discord users. Um, who am I kidding? Discord's not going to use on a live stream. So uh, <laughs> if you're on <laughs> if you're on Discord, what I'll do is I'll take this logo or this image I created. I'll go to Discord. I'll do the this one, <laughs> the little side hash thing. Okay. Whatever that's called. Yeah. Backslash. Um, backslash. Thank you. And I'll tell it to uh, give me the, to describe the image. So then it'll give me prompts. Like had I put the prompts into Discord because Discord obviously is much better at images. So then I'll take, it'll give me four prompts for different types of prompts. And then I'll take those and I'll put those into Discord. And that's where, that's like how I created that do epic shit. Um, one that I was working on, right? This one right here. Um, this was one that I was working on in uh, Phoenix. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's how I reverse engineer this stuff sometimes because these will be kind of cartoony. It always kind of has the same same feel. So that's this is a really, really cool tool, you guys. Had I told it to put words on it, you can actually take this in, put it into Canva. Um, and um, upload it here and you can go into your paint tool i'm not gonna i'm not gonna waste your guys' time sizing it and stuff but you can go into this draw tool now i learned this from perry yeah. belcher i like to give credit where credit's due um add new color get your little dropper and let's say i want to it's got let's say it's got some words here so i can actually color this in and keep the same color scheme um, uh, or let's say that I want to take these out with the same, I can go back in, get that same color scheme. Um, ah, grab the little dropper and let's say I want to kind of make it this white. You can take your marker here. You can make it a little bit bigger. Um, and then I can put the Invictus logo right here. Oh, now, okay. Yeah, I got to play around a little bit, but this is just yeah, an yeah, easy way 
Um, so now I could go up here, I can grab a logo. Um, and I can stick it on this bag, which yeah. I could, you know, so lots of cool little things that you can do there. Um, inside of Canva, we've got some of the same technology inside this magic studio. So let's say that I want to, um, do a post about, um, local insurance agents, um, are the best. So I can go through here, I can type that in and magic design is going to give me every single um, format that I need to put this sort particular post up. So here you go. There's a story, another story, a story, social media, Instagram post, YouTube nails. Hmm. So all that you have to do is go back in and re revamp this, right? Because maybe, yeah. maybe it's a good template. So then just update your images. Etc. Yeah. yeah, maybe the Eiffel Tower or whatever that is isn't the best. <laughs> so it's it's extremely, extremely easy to use. Now, let's say that I want to do it in Emily Trevino's colors. Boom, that's done. We're good to go. So um, don't sleep on the magic tools inside of Canva either because they're easy to use. Um, this is one of my absolute favorites for those of you guys doing presentations um magic design for presentations so we're going to click magic design on presentations gage just woke up hopefully my husband will be right behind him <laughs> um and we want to say uh tacos and medicare oh hold on i did something wrong here let's try it again So let me find the presentations again. Okay, I'll have to find that here in a second. I'll look around. I'll I'll drop another video in here. Yeah, I didn't, not right there. It should be this one, but I'm not seeing it just right now. Let me see. Let's try again. Um. Click left on this, right a pitch. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. So tacos and Medicare. And then let's, usually it just, let's apply all 10 pages. No, I'm missing something here. So I'm going to move okay. on. I'll show you guys how to do it um, on a different video. But it's in here somewhere. Click magic design. Um, it's in here somewhere. I'm just not quite sure. They moved it around on me, but I will show you guys um, how this works here. But uh, Canva, you need to have the Pro Canva. It's doing all kinds of crazy things right now. Um, this is new. I hadn't even noticed this one just yet, um, where it's actually will write the copy for you. Yep. So, so many amazing things that are in here. The magic edits, all of that stuff. Um, just go through here and kind of play around and see what's going on. You can put different images in here. It's going to, uh, their QR codes. I'm having a lot of success with, uh, blurry images. There's tons and tons and tons of tools in here. Load in your brand so that you have your brand kits in here. Um, and make sure you got everything firing there. Now, another cool tool was Bard, but now it's called Gemini. I don't know. Yeah. Why. Um, <laughs> But I haven't is, used this one. I generally use chat GPT. Do you find any big difference between the two? So the reason we want to use Gemini or Bard is to really search the internet for us because this is a Google based AI. So I can go in here and I can say, um, good morning. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause myself real quick. So a lot of times, so some of these chat GPTs I have in here, my, my bots that I've been training, some of them are very aggressive. Some of them I talk very bro to. I'm like, yo, you totally screwed that up. Like, what the hell are you thinking? And the other ones I'm nice to because I want it to have that kind of theme going through it. So if I'm looking at something that's, um, that I'm writing and I want it to be more Dan Kennedy's voice while I tell it to be Dan Kennedy's voice, I have to talk like Dan Kennedy back to it like Sandra Gebhardt pretending to be Dan Kennedy. Right. Uh, and that's where you get copy like um, on this Vibe CMO offer I have here. 
um, you can see that I worked pretty hard with um, ChatGPT to put this with everything I've learned from Dan Kennedy in it with things like, let's have a frank conversation. Um, it's not a pipe dream. Uh, and then at the end, right, this isn't for the faint of heart. It's for the bold and brave who are ready to reclaim their crowns. That sounds like me, but it also has that, that Dan Kennedy edge to it. Yeah, yeah. So training these are very important. So I'm going to say, good morning. Um, please tell me the weaknesses you are seeing in the Austin, Texas area for Medicare agents. What are they missing online that I can focus on? So we can have it scrape other YouTube channels. You can have it scrape um, what's going on. Um, so it's going to go through here and it's going to give us kind of a basic answer. And then I want you to say, and then we want to go through and we want to say um, in regards to SEO practices, who has the best performing websites? And I'm starting on a cold chat here. Right. So, of course, we want to continue to prompt this. Um, but it's going to show us the most. Yeah, it's just going to show it's gen, general yeah, websites. Yeah, this is kind of generic. Um, so then we're going to go in and ask it new questions. Who is the top producing health insurance agency in Austin, Texas. And you just got to keep prompting it until mm -hmm. it gets to where you where you want it to go. So this is new. Interesting. This is new. So that's OK. So we're going to keep asking it questions until we get what we want it to say. Um, so what are some of the best ways to. Um, what are some of the busiest. Um, weekend events in Austin, Texas, where you can have a insurance booth. There we go. So see how we just keep, we just keep working through with it. So yeah. AI is changing every single day. Everything is nuts. So here are one, two, three, four, five, six different places that maybe Grace hadn't thought about setting up a booth yet. Um, and she can go through and look at these like, is this, and then um, the next steps, this is where the human part comes in. So now we need to look up this South by Southwest. We need to see if they have a website. Do they have vendor space available? Um, what's the cost for it? All of that kind of stuff. Austin City Limits Music Festival um, with 400,000 music lovers. So a lot of times agents are like, well, I want to host a seminar or I want to have a booth. PNC agents, everybody all around, right? A lot of us should be working booths still. They're very useful. Um so you can go in here and pull these websites and see, is this a place that I can be? Obviously, there shouldn't be that many insurance agents at the Austin City Music, Austin City Limits Music Festival, right? Oh. So it, this, yeah. is, this is a way to help you kind of expand your mind. And I actually like it when AI starts giving me generic stuff back like this, because you saw me really start to think, okay, mm -hmm. um, can we look at Google My Business? No, we can't because of privacy. Okay, well, where can I go? Um, and you can actually put different YouTube channels in here and say, can you um, scrape this YouTube channel? Well, you could you have to try it again. Um, scrape Tony's YouTube channel and tell me what he hasn't trained on 
on a Tuesday that I can come in and do. Okay. Um, so we got time for one more, Tony. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So let's talk about cap cut. Cap cut is super, super cool. You guys, there's so many cool things you can do in here. Um, I know you guys got Cedric coming on tomorrow. Yeah, we do. So said is a genius. He is a visual storytelling genius. Not all of us can afford Cedric. Am I right? <laughs> he's not, he's not going anywhere. So if you don't have that brand of creativity or the budget to hire a Cedric, you can go in here and you really can create um, some really incredible videos. So I like to use the memes <laughs> specifically. So I'll just go in here and I'll search memes and then I'll just take this and add my text to it. Um, so I'll go in here and say, uh, when you work with the wrong insurance agent. And now I have a reel to put up and watch. He falls over. He's so cute. <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But it's it's so simply, it's just so easy to do. Um, I was running an ad with this one on it. I don't know if it'll show you. So he's got that little grin at the end. Now mm -hmm. I can tell you, I'm not going to show you inside my um, ads manager, but I can tell you <laughs> that um, those memes perform significantly higher on your ads. So you take that little skeleton that's falling over. Again, your license, you guys need to know what you can do, but that could be a Medicare ad, couldn't it? I mean, it, it, I know for sure it can be a PNC ad. It could be a life insurance ad. Yeah. Um, so it's just the pattern interrupt. And that's what we're looking for. That all of this stuff we're doing, um, you know, where should we host seminars, um, different pictures, things like that. Like that picture of, the insurance agents holding the bag of money and the lions coming out and they have their swords. That's a different sort of image than what we're used to seeing. Yeah, it's a definitely. pattern interrupt. Somebody's going to stop at that. Um, and, and same with the little memes and things like that. So that's what we want to do is we want to interrupt people's patterns. They're seeing tons and tons and tons of advertising every single day. And the long and short of it, you guys, I don't care what insurance you write. Every single major carrier is spending billions of dollars, plus the government, if you're in, <laughs> in Medicare, to tell people that insurance is cheap and easy to get. All you have to do is go to farmers.com or medicare.gov and you can get insurance. Why do I need to talk to you? Why do I need to have a conversation with Tony Merwin about my insurance? And... um. My challenge for you guys this year, besides um, really just getting into all of the free resources that are out there, um, if you have a budget, hire somebody. Um, mm -hmm. I have a specialty program that is specifically there where I'll come in, work as your in-house CMO, and that is for people that are ready to scale but not quite ready to bring on a Cedric and team um, for those six figures you know, salaries that that's going to cost you. Um, but we can get you to that next spot. If you don't have a budget, you have all the training in the world that is out there that's free to do it. You have these tools, but you have to make the time to do it. It's as, it is as important as a sales call. So you can't miss these sorts of things. Um, but creating that omnipresence, being out there in the world, the consistency, all of that stuff is extremely important. And then you can start using these tools to create those pattern interrupts but you have to let people know why I should be working with you. And if your answer to that, you guys, I love you again, Taylor Swift Hearts, <laughs> Taylor Swift Heart. If your value proposition is customer service and you put the care in insurance, that is not unique. That right. is the baseline. We expect good customer service. We expect that you care about us. What do you do for me? What, why do I need to call you instead of going to farmers.com and buying car insurance? Yeah. We take the care out of Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, no, they say it the other way, no, Tony. Oh, is it the other <laughs> way? Put it, no, put it I, in. I screwed that up. Um, <laughs> I got to work so, on that. Um, CMS regulations, uh, uh, commission, you know, Medicare agents, if you guys are watching, I'm sure we're, we got a bit of a Medicare following on here, right? If you guys are watching, your CMS rules are not, in my opinion, again, are not any different than farmers agents getting half their commission cut right now or P uh, uh, other captive carriers that are saying, you know, you can only get your bonus if you sell this. And there's always something changing. Mm -hmm. There's always something changing. Do not pull up the reins on your marketing horse because you're waiting to see what might potentially happen. Now you can be smart. You can make little changes. I know a lot of people have changed their name just in case you know, things like that, but, um, stop stopping. You got to stop stopping. You can post on social media. You can hire a mentor. You can be brave and do things that make you uncomfortable because that's how we grow. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're coming up on the hour real quick. Uh, but I want, I have one quick question for you. Um, how would you recommend if an agent's out there like, man, I I'm in, I want to post more on social media. Right. I see some of the different tools, but I'm, str I'm still struggling to come up with topics to post about. What would you recommend? I mean, I have my own ideas, but I'm just curious. What would you recommend for an agent? It's like, what do I post? Like, how do I find the relevant topic that I need to be posting about to my audience? So I think it's the most important to post about yourself. There is a book called The Alter Ego Effect um, that absolutely catapulted me into the stage presence I am today. I credit a lot of my speaking success um, to that book specifically, The Alter Ego Effect. But it's it's knowing your, like I said, knowing your, your marketing uh, goals, knowing your value proposition, your, your mission statement, who your ideal client is. When you know all of that stuff, it becomes so much easier to talk to that person. So when I'm talking, I have my ideal client avatar for Sandra Gephardt marketing and a bit too much. And I bring that. So when I'm putting stuff out, I am talking to my ideal client avatar. I am not talking to everybody else. I'm not trying to be all things to everybody. You have to get really clear on who you are, what your goals are, what you want your message out into the world to be. And if customer service is all you have right now and you don't want to spend money on hiring somebody to help you work through that, then talk about customer service. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying that's not the best you have inside of you. So you really have to get into who you are what you stand for, and then put that information out. Because the difference is I can get all the education I need on insurance or I, I coach wrestling now. And a lot of the parents are like, well, this is my first time in wrestling. I don't know how the points work or I don't know how this stuff works. Cool. Google it. Right. Like we can Google anything. <laughs> um, we can use chat GPT. We can use Bard. We can use all these tools to learn anything that we want to do. Um, but what kind of wrestling coach do you think really into the mindset? I'm really into teaching these kids that they're champions. If they have a plan and they execute it, they're winners. I'm a different sort of coach because I'm a different, my mindset's a little bit different. Okay. Absolutely. So that, that really, I mean, when we're talking about coaching, like that shows you like what's important to me. It's important to me that every single uh, four-year-old to eight-year-old that I work with feels confident when they go out on the mat. Um, so what is what is your value proposition into the world? Beautiful. Well, I really appreciate you coming on and dropping some knowledge for us. Thank you so much. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. But for people that want to reach out to Sandra Gebhardt, real quick, and as a matter of fact, real quick, it's I saw you again at DTDW and you had a program that you were pushing out to help agents. You, you mentioned something about being their virtual CMO or something, but just tell us a little bit about what you're doing with that vibe program. So that's the vibe CMO. We put the vibes back in your market. We help you find your marketing vibe. <sighs> Screw up your own tagline. <laughs> um, but that specifically, I have nine spots left open in that. Um, it's $2,000 a month, but that is for the agent that is ready to scale. Somebody that can't quite bring on a full-time marketing okay. person because that's 
that's a hundred thousand dollar at minimum position in a year. Um, but we work together hand in hand. We go through all of your marketing. It's a 12 month commitment. Um, it's not something where you can say, what's my ROI on this, <laughs> right? Because you're using the right words. But what we do is we put your entire marketing together from top to bottom, traditional marketing, CRMs, everything that you need to become a machine to be able to make that next scale in your business. Um, one of the things that I love about that program the most um, that I work through with my mentors is when we get to that 10 month mark or nine month mark, no matter where we're at, um, I will help you train and bring on an in-house CMO. So mm -hmm. this isn't a program. This isn't a coaching thing. This is us working together like I'm inside your office. Um, for 24K and you can't hire me for 24K full time. It's it's um, it's really a ridiculously successful program. Um, I've actually had more PNC agents take me up on that. A um, lot of captive PNC agents, um, some Medicare agents and then a coffee shop. <laughs> huh. Nice. So um, there's there's a lot of really cool things going on. You guys marketing is moving faster than I've ever seen it move. Right. 2015 was kind of the last time we saw this push. Um, and you hear guys like Justin or Mike Moore and those guys really talk about the glory days of marketing. Um, and we're back in that. The newsletters, the things that you guys are seeing me put out, the apps, all of that kind of stuff is moving so, so quickly. And if you're not working with somebody that knows marketing, um, you're going to get left behind a little bit on this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's not a threat. That's just a statement. I'm back into, you know, I'm paying $50,000 a year for my mentors again, because I need help keeping track of all of this stuff. You saw me right. in Bard, you know, hey, this is different. It did something different two weeks ago. We were moving at the speed of light marketing. Yeah, I would agree. Um, especially now that we've basically unleashed AI right on the world. Uh, everything's going to move at an exponential curve from here, right? Yep. Uh, and we're seeing this in Facebook. Like if you're out there and you run Facebook ads, like you see Facebook's changes and updates in their platform, whether it's the the the, the structure of the ad stuff, some of the automations that they now have within there and the different AI tools that you can use within Facebook, like that stuff is growing. I'm watching Canva, just like you I mean, it was changing as you were doing stuff on there. Like, so staying up to date with is tough, especially if you're an agent out there that's already running a business. So you got to follow the right people. Number one, right? There's a guy on YouTube that I follow named Ben Heath, who really does a good job keeping himself up to date on the uh, Facebook side of things. Like every time there's a new change in Facebook ads, he's always out there talking about it and how it's going to affect you. So find the right people, follow the right people, follow people like Sandra who are staying up to date on this stuff. And, uh, you know, Google that shit when you like Brian Moore says right here, you can't find it. Just Google that shit. You will find the answer. You just got to be a little resourceful out there. He knows. Right. And don't be afraid to step in the new wild, wild west of marketing that we are now living in. And it's an election year this year. Your ads yes, are going to be is. more expensive. They're going to get um, rejected more that they're not going to make the same mistake that they made four years ago. It's just they're not going to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's especially true if you're out there doing direct mail, like your direct mail is going to plummet this year. So uh, definitely, you know. Be prepared for that. Uh, that was Ben Heath, Mr. Moore. Ben Heath, H-E-A-T-H. -E he is an English fellow. Got a great channel on YouTube, and he gives away the farm uh, with tips and understanding how to run that platform. So definitely a great follow there. Well, Sandra, thank you again. I think those guys overseas are always ahead of us because they're in the future. I, maybe, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> they are in the future. That's a good point. So thank you so much for coming on. What's the best and easiest way for people to reach out to Sandra Gebhardt if they want to chat with you? Oh, it's backwards. SandraGebhardt.com. Easy enough. SandraGebhardt.com. You can also find her on Facebook. It's pretty easy to locate Sandra. She is a bit too much. So don't, uh, don't freak out uh, when you do meet her for the first time. But she is outstanding. I will tell you this. If you were ever at an event and Miss Gebhardt is there, seek her out. Get in her face for a minute. Share some space with her uh, because she will light you up. I promise you. She's definitely one of the most beautiful, fun-loving people to be around and a great, great gem in this industry. So thank you again for taking time out of your very busy Montana day to come join us. I'm glad we were able to get you out of bed before nine. <laughs> Goals. <laughs> awesome. 
Well, listen, have a great day. Thank you guys for tuning in. And as always, we do it live. We do it on Tuesdays and we do it at 9 a.m. Central. We'll see you next time for Tuesday training. Take it easy. Ooh.